Plastic Music Podcast, Volume 1, Program 1. Welcome to the very first Plastic Music Podcast. On tonight's episode, we'll be hearing new music from some artists who specialize in the field of analog synthesis. We'll go to New York to talk to Jacob Graham of Cascading Slopes and his electronic music studio, and then to Michigan to learn some helpful techniques for emulating the natural sounds of the Great Lakes wilderness with our analog synthesizers. And remember, When you hear this sound, that means it's time to turn the page. Now join me, your host, Joanna Tolman, on a journey into the old sounds of tomorrow. Here we are in New York City for the first of what we hope will be a recurring segment called A Glimpse into the Electronic Music Studio of fill in the blank. In this case, it would be A Glimpse into the Electronic Music Studio of Cascading Slopes. Let's go inside. Oh, hi, Joanna. Hello, Jacob. Thanks for having us. Who's that behind you? Oh, I'm sorry. You haven't been introduced yet. This is the listener of the Plastic Music Podcast. It's a pleasure to meet you. Come in. I'm just finishing up working on some music now. Have any questions? What? Oh, yes. Uh, What's this device here? This? This is an oscilloscope. And why can't our listener see it? Well, because it doesn't make any sound of its own. It's a device for viewing sounds. So our listener can't see it because on this program, hearing is how we see things. That's exactly right. Could you demonstrate for our listener a piece of equipment that does make sound? Sure. This here is the most recent addition to the studio. It doesn't make any sound of its own, but it does process sounds. It's called an acoustic computer, and it's made by Delta Labs. And what does it do? Well, when you make a sound with a synthesizer, like this, notice that it sounds pretty dead, as if it were recorded in a vacuum. 
That's because the sound doesn't actually exist in space the way normal sounds do. Electronic sounds travel straight from the instrument it's created with to the loudspeaker. So we have to apply an artificial environment to the sound to give it life. And that's what the acoustic computer does? Exactly. Can we hear it in action? Sure. So here we have an unaffected sequence. And here's that same sequence running through the acoustic computer. Oh, that's lovely. Do you have any completed songs that you could play for us now? I think so. Let me see. I know I have something in here. Hang on a second. Oh, here's... No, that... Wait. Oh, here it is. How about this song? Great. This is Language of Angels by Cascading Slopes. Did you hear those bells and horn sounds at the end of the song? How do you feel about using synthesizers to recreate sounds from the natural world? Should a synthesizer only be recognized as a synthesizer? 
Or is it all right to be mistaken for something else? How would you go about synthesizing the sound of a plucked string or a sound that's blown through a cylinder? Here at Plastic Music, we believe that learning the basic principles of synthesizing natural sounds can only strengthen one's sonic palette, no matter how you choose to apply that knowledge. In each program, we'll show you a different sound that you can try to make yourself. So now, let's head over to Muskegon, Michigan, where David Barnhart is going to teach us how to synthesize some sounds from nature. I was camping by myself in the woods near Lake Michigan. As I lay awake listening to all the tranquil sounds of nature, I began to wonder how difficult it would be to reproduce these seemingly random sounds electronically. Would you like to synthesize some nature sounds with me? Let's get our analog synthesizers out of the cabinet, along with some paper and a pencil. Any analog synthesizer will do, as long as it has one oscillator filter, an envelope generator, an amplifier, and also a low-frequency oscillator, or LFO, to modulate our sound. The sound we're going to create today is the sound of crickets. So we'll begin with a standard synthesizer sound, like this. The first thing we're going to do is adjust the envelope shape of the sound. So rather than a long sound, we want to have a short sound. So let's bring the decay, sustain, and release down to give us a much shorter sound. Crickets are often associated with the violin. You'll sometimes see cartoon crickets wearing a top hat and playing a violin. So let's make our sound sound a little more like a violin. We'll do this by bringing the attack up just a little on our envelope generator. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the pitch of the sound. In nature, crickets tend to be pretty high pitched, so let's turn the range of our oscillator all the way up to the number 2 on our oscillator's range selector. Now we're going to modulate the oscillator with the LFO. Let's change the shape of our LFO waveform to a square and turn the rate all the way up. Now we'll turn the amount of modulation affecting the oscillator down considerably. Now to animate our sound a little more, we'll change our oscillator's wave shape from a sawtooth to a square or pulse waveform and have our LFO affect the pulse width's modulation. And there you have it, a synthesized cricket sound. If you have a sequencer handy, you can use it to program a pattern with random breaks and notes that are an octave lower than our primary note. And if you have some reverb, you could add that too, to give the sound its own environment.
Well, that's our program. We hope you enjoyed our rare glimpse into the studio of Cascading Slopes and our electronic wilderness lesson by David Barnhart. If you'd like to hear more music from classic music artists, keep an eye out for the forthcoming compilation called New Music Horizons, which will feature exclusive tracks from Travelog, Cascading Slopes, Said Fantasy, Winterlish, Relic Pop, and others. Tonight's broadcast was directed by Jacob Graham with assistance from David Barnhart and featured all original music and sound effects by plastic music artists. Justin Jolly was our audio engineer and the chime sound was made by Ronnie Martin. Be sure to tune in next time as we discover more old sounds.